I am dwelling in a ray of sunlight, and I feel so tranquil. No, actually, I don't. I just feel kind of, kind of a little warm. Um, but I wanted to talk about something that actually has nothing to do with tranquility, but it does have to do with uh, heat, in a sense. I um, I, I have to say, uh, and I think I admitted this yesterday when I. Uh, did my video about the Rittenhouse verdict. I have I have to say that I didn't follow the case as it was going going on blow by blow. I mean, I would hear things here and there. I would he see, you know, that the the prosecutor was doing outrageous things and that the judge was getting angry with the prosecutor and lashing out at him, letting him have it, and all this kind of stuff was going on. <clears throat> um, and I heard, and I was hearing things about. The, the the men who uh, who were killed by Rittenhouse, um, and uh, whew, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying just go on a on a vigilante rampage and and shoot a bunch of people, but if if you were to choose to do so, uh, and you took out those people, and I'm not saying that's what he did either. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, I believe he was put in a situation where he had to defend himself, but. Man, the kind of scum and lowlife who were out there, uh, out there on that day, fomenting chaos, you know, helping to burn down the city of Kenosha, taking advantage of this, uh, this situation where there was another uh, confrontation between a, a, a shooting, a police shooting where, uh, as far as I understand it, they, uh, the, the, there, it was a traffic stop, and the, the cop asked the the man uh, uh, to put his hands up and said he reached for his gun, and, and they shot him, which you know, everybody knows that I'm not a big fan of police, but if that's truly what happened, then I don't see how that was uh, anything, uh, how they did anything wrong in that respect. But anyway, it, it set everything off, and, and, went, and it all went from there. Now, what I wanted to say... Now that I've, you know, now that it's over and I've gone back and look and listened to uh, Kyle's testimony and just heard more about some of the facts of the case, um, and so much of it is just consonant with Antifa behavior, Antifa tactics. And when I say anti Antifa behavior and tactics, I'm really not talking about anything sophisticated. Tactics makes it sound like, oh, they've got these tactics that they do. And no, when I when I mean tactics, I mean Antifa uh, is uh, is prone to to instigate violence. That is their mo. That is what they do when they are in a situation where they're. Uh, uh, um, where there's a, a say a march uh, or or an event, uh, and and there's people there that they feel hostile towards, that they feel are Nazis uh, or otherwise, um, you know, just just uh, unworthy of uh, of of um, decent treatment because they're already beyond the pale, because ideologically speaking, they aren't uh, in line with Antifa in one way or another, then Antifa's uh, tactic is to go, is to strike, is to just attack. And there, there is absolutely no honor in Antifa. Um, you know, they'll, they'll just come up from you from behind and, uh, and hit you in the back of the head with a bottle. I mean, that's, that, this is, these are, these are the kinds of things that they do. And Kyle Rittenhouse was getting attacked left and right. Uh, he had this one, one guy, uh, hit him with a, a, with his skateboard across the face. Some other guy, you know, uh, jumped up and punched him in the, kicked him in the face or punched him in the face or something. And then there was that, uh, guy who turned out to be a child molester who, who ran up to him and kept, kept threatening him, kept menacing him. Uh, and, and, uh, eventually tried to grab his gun away from him and, you know, chaos all around hostility all around Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, he had, he had a weapon, he had a right to defend himself. And so he did. But my point is, um, people, when they think about 
Charlottesville. They don't. They and this is this is something I've I've been harped I've harped on before, because I was there. They they don't realize that Char in in Charlottesville it was almost exactly the same circumstances as in Kenosha, which is to say, uh, in both cases you had an apparent police stand down order. The police were doing shit. The police were doing nothing to help protect people's businesses or protect people's persons um, uh, while while the Antifa and BLM and uh, and whoever else uh, just just raged about the city burning and looting. Um, and uh, that was pretty much the deal with Charlottesville. The, they uh, during the Charlottesville, the Unite the Right rally. I'm not saying the way that it was organized was, uh, you know, any stroke of genius, but I will say that uh, when people, uh, when typical people, when normies, let's let us just say to use that word, think about or talk about Char- what happened in Charlottesville, they tend to think, oh, all these right wing Nazi types came and and were mean and nasty and violent, uh, and uh, they. And then the Antifa just had to fight back, and the, the Antifa nobly fought back against these uh, um, these violent uh, uh, right wing instigators. The exact opposite was the truth. Once again, in Charlottesville, the police did diddly; they did jack shit, and I believe they were ordered to do jack shit by the mayor and by the then governor Terry McAuliffe, who's who's thankfully no longer governor who thankfully got voted voted out uh, <clears throat> um, a couple weeks ago but uh, they did nothing and the antifa did their thing which is to to instigate violence and people need to understand this people need to <clears throat> comprehend that the antifa uh, sees no uh, there, there's no honor whatsoever in antifa and in the way that they choose to go about engaging in uh in uh street violence you know there's no uh, uh we'll we'll wait for them to hit first or or, or we'll there's no um you know we're, we're going to go up and and uh say our piece and try to shout them down or or you know we're going to have our say uh, you know, we'll, 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 uh, we'll try to drown out the hate with, uh, with, prog- with our progressive, our message of progressive love and, or whatever. Uh, no, with them, it's just, uh, this person is a Nazi because, uh, he doesn't believe that, that everything about the, the Southern Confederacy, that all relics of the Southern Confederacy should be torn down, or this person is a Nazi because, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the case was in Kyle Rittenhouse's uh, case, you know, because he's there, you know, trying to uh, uh, trying to help people, uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to protect people from the, the burners and the looters and the terrorists, which is the, the Antifa. Antifa openly embraces terrorism. Um, it's simply what they do. Now, they're they're all, they're they're not tough. Uh, I want to emphasize this. It's not like they, they uh, um, you know, um, because again, there's no honor to it. You know, it's like they, they have they they get in a situation where they vastly outnumber the enemy and then surround him, uh, and uh, and then you know when superior force uh, shows itself, they scatter and flee. Um, but their their whole mo is just to try to uh, try to hurt as many of their their enemy as they uh, as they as, as they are able to hurt if not kill um, and th- at least those three people you know tried either to either ver- to very badly hurt uh, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse or to kill him one had a gun pointed at him uh, and. Uh, Kyle didn't fight, didn't shoot back until, uh, until this guy pointed a gun at him. And, uh, at that point, you know, um, it was uh, whoever was going to draw first. And thankfully it was, it was Rittenhouse who drew first, but 
when you pay attention to the testimony, when you pay attention to all of the, all of the stuff that went on in Kenosha on that fateful evening, it shows there's just this, uh, uh, this similarity of, uh, this tactical similarity. And I even hesitate to call it tactical because what's really the tactic of, of it? It's, it, that's giving it too much credit. You know, if your whole, th whole thing is, we're just going to get a whole bunch of us. We're going to put masks over our faces so that we can't be recognized. Uh, we're going to light, you know, Molotov cocktails, or we're going to fill, uh, cups full of cement, uh, or, or whatever. We're going to, you know, come with our makeshift, uh, weapons, which are designed to hurt people. And we're going to, we're going to attack this group of, of people, uh, and, and try to inflict as much damage as possible on them. That's Antifa. Okay. And the people that, uh, that, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse killed, none of them were black, right? They were, they were all white Antifa, the two that he killed and the one that he, uh, I guess maimed, they were white Antifa. Um, Antifa is mostly white. No, I'm not, I'm not exonerating, you know, bad behavior by blacks in situations like this, but I am saying it's very interesting that that Rittenhouse gets, uh, you know, they try to smear him as a racist as a, or as a, uh, uh, as a member of a white uh, supremacist group or something like that. When all the, the holy people who killed were white people. No, I guess one of them was Jewish. Uh, he killed a Jewish child molester. So <laughs> that proves that he's anti-Semitic because you, you know, you can't just, you can't just kill a Jewish child molester who's, who's trying to kill you. Uh, you know, you have to just, you have to just let him take your gun away and, and, and shoot you with it. Uh, otherwise you're anti-Semitic. <laughs> I mean, the kind of things, the kind of, uh, nonsense <clears throat> that they try to get us to believe is just, it's just extraordinary. Um, but thank God justice prevailed. Um, and, uh, thank God they, they, uh, they found him not guilty in spite of everything, in spite of the lying media, you know, in spite of the, the part of the lying media actually trying to, uh, trying to reach the juror, the jurors and trying to intimidate the jurors, uh, which came out, uh, the other day, which got MSNBC barred from the courtroom. Um, all these highly unethical things. They, the people, people on the left, generally today don't seem to think that anything is unethical if it, if it's uh if it's in the service of fighting against quote unquote racists or quote unquote fascists or quote unquote nazis which i see no evidence that Kyle Rittenhouse was any of those uh but it didn't matter they branded him one and therefore he was one and therefore <clears throat> it was open season on him in the media. It was open season on him uh, by all the uh, powerful and influential uh, 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 politicians. Um, and he's just the seventh, this, this pudgy 17 year old, you know, puppy dog faced kid, you know, I don't know. It may, it, maybe it was, uh, it, maybe it, it, it was um, not the best judgment to, to go to Kenosha to try to, to try to help out uh, the way that he did, but I think he did it out of a, out of a sense of idealism, out of a, a notion that, uh, you know, this is his hometown in some way or other. And he was wanting, or he has some connection to it. His family, a lot of his family lived there <clears throat> and he wanted to help people. Um, and for that, he was subjected to, uh, you know, who knows, like an uh, hours of, uh, of trauma and then months of trauma following that word, where they arrested him, treated him like a common criminal, and uh, threatened to uh, to lock him up uh, forever for the crime of defending himself. Um, but anyway, the takeaway I want people to get from this video is this is Antifa. This is how they behave. So uh, remove the scales from your eyes. Stop thinking to yourself, well, they're Antifa, which means they're anti-fascists which means they can't be b that bad if they're against fascism. No, no, <laughs> that's not, that's not the case. That is not the case. I mean, they could call themselves anything. 
it doesn't matter what you label yourself. It, what matters is how you behave. And, and here, just like in uh, Charlottesville, we see clear cut a clear cut uh, example of how this group behaves. Uh, <clears throat> and they are scum. Uh, and uh, they're scum because of the way that the, the things that they do. They, they attack people. They, they attack innocent people. Uh, they, they, uh, they, they, they assault people. They, they, they cause damage, <clears throat> uh, to people and to property, um, and somehow think that they're righteous in doing so. So those are my thoughts about, uh, how, uh, how the Kyle Rittenhouse case, uh, you know, kind of vibes with Charlottesville, with what I saw and experienced in Charlottesville, uh, with the same vile bunch of, uh, of, um, I don't know, I guess people, I hesitate to call them people, but I guess they're people. I don't know. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll accord them the, the label of people. Anyhow, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. My name is Andy Nowicki. Check out my work at altrightnovelist.com. My latest book, The Insurrectionist, can be purchased at terrorhousepress.com.